established forever and ever by his decree. And in the end, his name alone is the Lord. Above the earth and the heavens is Lord. And I am This is awesome. <laughs> so good to have Jason with us, Micah, you guys, and your whole family. It just, God, so awesome. We're going to do a couple more songs, then we're going to, then we're going to turn it over to Jason for the rest of the night.
We celebrate you, God. We love you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. I have a scripture I wanted to share, Psalm 42, verse 7. And I think I'm going to read it just in a couple of translations so you can really hear it. It says, a deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. I hear the tumult of the raging seas as your waves and surging tide sweeps over me. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. That's just three. God wants to take us deeper. He wants us to go deeper tonight. Amen? You can feel the sweet presence of the Lord, and there's no, uh, no doubt we have some waves going on out there. I walk through them on the way here. But um, God is awesome. We want him to take us to a deeper place. We want, the, you know, we want that deep place in us to be touched by God. Let's believe for that tonight. Let's believe as we continue in, in worship tonight. Jason's going to lead us in... Um, it's going to be awesome, but we just want to, it's a corporate thing. We come together, we're all together, and as we lift up our worship to the Lord, he pours back on us. And that's what's happening. Hallelujah. We can rejoice in that. Um, what we'd like to do now is uh, we want to receive an offering before we, get, before we get going into the second half. Are you guys all with me? This is part of worship. This is worshiping God, Amen. So um, I think I'll have Pete. You want to come up? Thank you, Father. Yeah, let's just prepare our offering, and we're going to... Jason's going to come up now. Good. Um, You know, it's really difficult sometimes to... to (laughs) It's really difficult sometimes to, to uh, but it's really not like we're stopping anything. If we stay, uh, if we just stay in the presence of God and and just continue to worship Him, it's really not that way. But um, I do need to make a, a couple of announcements tonight, and uh, so I just wanted to do that right now before we go into the to the rest of the night. Last night there was just some uh, through Jason, uh, some amazing ministry going on and prayed for uh, the students at our uh, Levite Praise Institute that we're doing right now uh, for these next uh, couple weeks, just beginning, just about ready to start the second uh, session, the two-week session. Leonard Jones has been teaching that um, and uh, hosting this school and just been amazing. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that you uh, knew that we had available uh, tonight Leonard's music, first of all, Leonard's music over on the table, and you'll just, you really want to get Leonard's music and get his latest, uh, his latest uh, worship uh, project that, that he did, and then also Jason's uh, music available too on the table, and uh, I just think that you really want this music, uh, let me rephrase that, you really need this music, you know, and uh, it's just, it's, it's wonderful, and and uh, so I'm just going to pray. We're just going to receive an offering tonight. Um, and let's, just, uh, let's just continue to worship the Lord in our giving tonight. And, uh, Lord, I just thank you for the people that you brought. Um, uh, many familiar faces, faces that uh, are unfamiliar. But God, I just thank you for bringing us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Just thank you that we have so much in common um, as worshipers in the kingdom of God. And, and uh, Father, we just uh, received this offering tonight in your honor. Uh, 
to advance the kingdom of God, to advance the things that you want to do in the earth, Lord, uh, through this place and through the people that are a part of this ministry, Lord, um, through our musicians, through uh, our instructors, through uh, Leonard, through um, Jason. And, uh, and so, Lord, we just lift up this, uh, this gift, really this offering to you now. Um, God, we just pray that even as our worship reaches uh, you as a sweet-smelling savor, that also this, this gift, uh, this offering would also uh, reach you and be pleasing and satisfying to you. We just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Let's receive our offering tonight. Thank you. You say, open my eyes, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see. Open my eyes, Lord.
the mountain of the living God. See, the living God, he's a living God. Mountain of the living God, he's a living God. Yeah, the mountain of the living, the living God, he's a living God. Yeah, the mountain of the living God, standing right in front of me. Yeah, the mountain of the living, 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 resurrected Jesus God. unpredictable it always comes in the way we least expect it mm -hmm. just give me a little bit more send to my piano and the Nord sound in my monitor So, Father, we are here. Mm. And Father, you father me. Just say that, Father, you father me. Father, you father me. You father me with holy love, with holy love, with grace and peace, with grace and peace. Your mercy, your mercy surprises me. It heals my heart. It helps me see. It helps me see. I am overwhelmed And I am overwhelmed The longer I'm aware The longer I'm aware Aware that you love me And I am overwhelmed The more that I'm aware Aware that You're the 
teaches to listen So I will seek first your kingdom. Say that. I will seek first. That's what we're here for. Your kingdom. And I will seek first your righteousness. Your righteousness. And everything I need, 
you will provide for me my heart is to see her your kingdom sing it again and i will see Righteousness, your righteousness, and everything I need, you will provide. You will provide for me. My heart is to see first. That's our heart. Your key.
that your king your kingdom my heart is to seek first your kingdom your kingdom our heart is to seek first it's to seek first your kingdom our life is to seek first it's to seek first your kingdom cause you would have Everything I've got, you have given it to me. You would I really want? Just tell them that you know, and you're all I really need. And everything I thing you know but like when I was writing this um, I could have said Jesus if you speak to me but I didn't and the reason is because some people that's their theology but I don't I just don't live my life as if God has a relationship problem or that God's the one that didn't show up in the garden to walk with us and we were the ones that just kept showing up, and he just never showed up. I just don't believe that at all. I don't believe that's a story of the Bible. It's not the gospel of the scriptures. The gospel of the scriptures doesn't tell us the great question is, where is God? The gospel is, is the great question is, where is man? And uh, that's the question. Where are you, Jason? I've come to walk with you. Mm -hmm. We're tricky like that, you know, even in our worship, you know what I mean? It's like we, we, we sometimes act toward God like he's Baal or something. Like, have you ever done that in worship where you're singing, I mean, and, and you're, you kind of, if you start asking yourself really what you're singing, you're pretty much singing, God, I hope you come. I hope you'll, you'll be present as if we're like these orphans and God's distant. 
And we're tricky as humans because what we do is we distance ourselves from God, just like Adam and Eve did. And then this is how crafty we are. We don't even know it sometimes. And then we blame him for the distance. Instead of looking and watching and waiting. I mean, even creation, just in creation, we can see resurrection in the power of God revealed. There's, a, there's gospel enough, Paul says, just in creation. The presence of God alone is, you know, the sun came up today. And we're crying out wanting to see the glory. But we slept through the sunrise. You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that that's what you did. I'm not taking that. I'm just saying that's how it works, right? So instead, we just, you know, even when I'm praying for my kids, I don't pray for my kids anymore. God, I really hope you'll, you know, I really ask you, Lord, just to uh, just be with Sam and be with Emma. And, and I, I, just even that, just flipping it and saying, thank you, God, that you're with Samuel and you're with Emma and you're working in their lives and you're, and, and, and you're so caring for them even more than I even know how to care for them. You're already way ahead of me and you're caring for them. And not only do you have plans for them, but you, you keep them healthy. So we pray for those little babies over there with the ear muffs, you know, and you know, just thank you for them, Lord. That they're healthy and that they're yours and you sent them to us, Lord, to teach us something. If we're willing to, to hear it, to receive your kingdom. Amen. Jesus, when you speak to me, I hope I'm listening to you. And that this heart of mine receives what is full. What is full of grace and truth? Whisper, whisper, whisper in my ear. Tell me words and tell me words I thought I'd never hear. And show me, show me, show me. Illuminate what's right in front of me.
Faith is prone to fear. Remind me of your love. Remind me that you never let me go. And I will not forget. I will not forget all you've done for me. I will not forget, I will not forget all you've done for me. I will not forget, I will not forget all you've done for me. I will not forget, I will not forget all you've done for me. Let it find room in my heart And like a garden let your words begin to grow And when my faith is prone to fear Remind me of your love Remind me that you never let me go 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 I will not forget all you've done I will remember I will not forget All you've done I will remember I will not forget I will not forget All you've done I will remember I will not forget I will not forget All you've done Never let me go. I could just play that for a second. I will not forget. You've done for me 
So as, the, as they're playing, I just, I just was thinking about this just for a, a moment to reflect on this, okay? Like, the way, the way you get to know something is you hold it. You ever notice that? Like, like the first time you ever picked up a new iPhone or something. I don't know what it is. That sounds so cheap, you know what I mean? But what, you hold it, and you touch it, and you just look at it. And, and today, I, I was just on the drive here talking to Rachel. It just popped in my mind. And then as I was singing that, I didn't even, wasn't even connecting it with this. But you never let me go. Like this idea that, that long before you could even remember, God's been holding you. Like I, I see like these babies being held. Look at this. This baby is not going to remember this cognitively. But it's experiencing it nonetheless. Reality is happening to this child by being held. This is, this is what's going on with you and me. I mean, it, 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 it's like remembering is, you know, remember is the greatest commandment in the Old Testament. It's the greatest commandment given. It's spoken more than any other phrase and commandment in the Old Testament. Remember. Remember. I will not forget. I will not forget all you've done. I will not forget, I will not forget all you've done. I will remember, I will not forget, I will not forget all you've done. For me, I will, I will not forget, I will not forget all you've done. For me, I will not forget. I will not forget all you've done for me. Yeah. I will not forget. I will not forget all you've done for me. I will not forget. I will not forget all you've done for me. I will not forget. That's it. So we say this, remind me of your love. Just say that. Remind me of your love. Remind me. Remind me of your love. Remind me. Remind me of your love. Yes, remind me. Remind me of your love. Yeah. Remind me of your love. Mm -hmm. Remind me of your love. Remind me, 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 remind me. Oh, remind me of your love. Remind me, remind me. Remind me of your love, yeah. Remind me, remind me, remind me of your love. Remind me, remind me, remind me of your love. Remind me, remind me, remind me of your love. It's like it's amazing because it starts with faith and imagination. It's beautiful, isn't it? Like faith, hope, and love. We think about these things, you know, but Paul, so he goes through all that. The more you have faith, the more you hope. And then when you're not disappointed, the hope that doesn't disappoint, you wrap around again to a greater experience of love and a greater experience of faith, which deepens your hope and deepens the intimacy of love and being reminded of that again and again and again. It's like a circle, right? I'll just give you an example. I have this great friend in the northern parts of Africa where there's massive persecution. 
and he's a missionary with a whole family, and I'm over coffee last year, and he says to me, I said to him, hey, are you ever afraid, Chris? You ever afraid? I mean, you have your whole family there, and people are getting killed, and it's Christians, and, and he looked at me just like this. He just said this. He said, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, I used to be afraid. He said, I used to be afraid. And at first I thought he was just, you know, talking. He said, yeah, I used to be afraid. But then all of a sudden, all these things that I was afraid of, I started realizing it takes a lot of faith to be afraid. And then he had me. I thought I'd never heard of that. It takes a lot of faith, Jason, to be afraid. So I don't use my faith to fear anymore, Jason. I use my faith to hope. That really touched me. I thought, whoa, Jesus, remind me of your love. When my faith is prone to fear, remind me of your love. But you never let me go. Whisper, whisper, whisper in my ear. Tell me words, Lord. And tell me words I thought I'd never hear. Show me. And show me, show me, show me what you see. Illuminate. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Say it again. Go on. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Illuminate. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Illuminate. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Mm-hmm. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Open my eyes, open my eyes. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Open my eyes, open my eyes, illuminate what's right in front of me. Mm-hmm. That we're never alone. What's right in front of me? You're never alone, never, never gone. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Mm-hmm. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Take his hand, take his hand, yeah. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Jesus is calling you, Jesus is calling you. Illuminate what's right in front of me. Go on, go on, go on. Listen to your heart. Oh, Jesus is calling, Jesus is calling, listen to your heart. Jesus is calling, Jesus is calling, listen to your heart. Jesus is calling, Jesus is calling, he's calling. Listen to your heart. 
And John says, and we've touched him with our hands. And we've heard him with our ears. And we've seen him with our eyes. This living Jesus. And so we know what we hold. Tonight, take his hand. Open up the eyes of your faith, the eyes of your heart, and take his hand. Mm -hmm. Jesus is calling, Jesus is calling, calling out your name, calling out your name. Listen to your heart. Jesus is calling, he's calling, he's calling out your name. He's calling out your name. God, be all glory and honor and praise. For Jesus is not like an imperial king who doesn't even know your name. The Bible says that he isn't like an empire at all. He is the one who knows you not by number but by name. He knows you by your name. And so we praise him. Lord, thank you for that. Let us walk in faith. Amen. Let's do it. Luke, count us out. I built my house upon a stone. This is our first time playing together, so you'll have to be patient with us. You know what I mean? Just, Luke's just doing the best he can, you know what I mean? There's no set list here, so we just. You're a gift, Luke. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. 
in tune just gets stranger by the day But that's okay Jason, come and walk with me. Mm, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to walk with me in the place of the unknown. sons and daughters of a living God. We don't have to be 
Yeah, just, just keep playing that. Don't be afraid, my God. Don't be afraid. We're the sons and daughters of a living God. We don't have to be afraid. We're the sons and daughters of a living God. We don't have to be afraid. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Do you remember Jesus in the boat? And the wind and the waves are crashing, and Jesus is asleep, and the disciples are mad. And they wake him up and they say, Jesus, <laughs> I mean, I don't think it was like that, probably like, hey, Jesus, we're going to die. It's probably like, hey, you know, something like that, you know, screaming or something. We're drowning. The waters are crashing. We're terrified. We're scared. We're going to die. And Jesus wakes up and you know, he gives them a little speech and everything, and then he calms the storm, and he talks about their faith, and one day I was reading that, and I couldn't help but think of the parallel passage of the Garden of Gethsemane, and it's the, it's the exact same story, it's just reversed, and, and Jesus is actually experiencing real fear of something eternal that's happening, Something truly prophetic is happening. And Jesus asks his disciples to stay awake and they can't. It's the exact same story. It's just flipped. And Jesus is the one needing the disciples to stay up for what really matters. And the Lord said to me, he said, Jason, I want you to sleep. See, to be a prophetic generation is not to stay awake to everything else that everybody else is already awake to. See what I'm saying? Like, I think sometimes we think to be a prophetic people that we stay awake for what everybody else is awake for. Like, we turn on CNN and we just get terrified like everybody else. But Jesus, Jesus says, no, 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 this is what I want you to do. I want you to sleep when I'm sleeping. And I want you to stay awake when I'm awake. And that is not, it's going to be a flip. And you have to learn. You have to be trained. It's like what I told you yesterday. You've got to be trained to see the fish and to shoot at it. You have to be trained over time to learn what Jesus sleeps to and what he stays awake for. Right? I think sometimes we just think, it's just like, oh, yeah, man, I'll just, uh, you know, read a couple books and, and this is, it's going to just happen, but it doesn't. You have to train yourself to hear. And just because you don't see it, and just because you don't hear, doesn't mean that it's not real. Hey, buddy. And, and that's, that's the, it's, it's like I said to the kids, the other, not the kids, but the, the students at the thing. I mean, some of them are older than me, so I don't know. What I said was, this is the problem with Jesus. A stranger is often presented to you wherever the kingdom of God is. And that's the problem. That's the struggle. Is that Jesus doesn't say, hey, I've got a new friend for you. It doesn't work that way. It's usually a stranger outside your door. And he could be a thief. She could be a thief or she could be a friend or he could be a friend. See, it's a stranger. I think sometimes we just expect... Christian living to be so like we don't have to listen anymore. We don't have to learn anything. It's just, oh yeah, oh yeah, of course, you know, I know by my feelings. What, no, no, it's more learning to listen and learning to keep our door open. Right? 
learning to keep the door open. Because if you keep your door closed, you'll keep out the thief for sure, right? But you'll also keep out the friend. And nine times out of ten, even the thief can end up being a friend. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's the thing about the kingdom is we got to leave our doors open and not be afraid. So, hmm. Yeah. So So, there's this, uh, there's this story of this, uh, There's a story of um, There's a story of a man walking down the street in New Zealand in Australia F.W. Borum he was sent to Australia and New Zealand to be sort of like the Spurgeon there he loved to tell stories he didn't like to preach like Spurgeon he ended up being a great preacher so he kind of had to find a whole new way to do it and uh So one day he's walking down the street and he looks into a kitchen garden. And he uh, and he sees a scarecrow standing in this kitchen garden. And he looks at the scarecrow. And he sees two birds, one on each arm of the scarecrow. You're wondering why it's taking me so long to tell a story. It's because I expect the children to be walking around. They're fine. But <laughs> some of y'all have some. Yeah, it's a little... Maybe I should just randomly be, you know, walk around. I'm just giving you the story the way that you look. See, just this whole random kind of chaotic. So we can both do this. Okay. So this is what he does. He, he looks into 
the garden and he sees this beautiful garden and he looks at this scarecrow and on the scarecrow there's these birds and he thinks it's hilarious because actually if you think about it, it is quite funny. There's two birds on a scarecrow. I mean, scarecrows are supposed to scare away birds, but the birds don't seem to be that afraid. And so he, he says, I'm going to give these birds names. I'm going to name this one bird the foolish bird, and I'm going to name this other bird the wise bird. And uh, he says, if I was a foolish bird, well, I'd, every time I see a scarecrow, I'd fly away and be afraid. But if I was a wise bird, well, then I would just fly around the streets where I live looking for scarecrows because I'd know if I could just find a scarecrow, then I'd just found a beautiful garden. Scarecrows, wherever there's a, the kingdom of God is, there's always, there's always a stranger always. It just doesn't work like, oh yeah, that's the friend. No, no, no. Judas is called Jesus' friend and the thief. He calls them both. Because you don't get to know. It's just not the way it works with Jesus. And if you keep your door closed, you'll end up keeping probably most of the thieves. You might still get thieves anyway. You definitely lose the friends. The second, whenever the kingdom of God is present, whenever there's something really valuable, there's always a scarecrow. And if you're a foolish bird, you will fly away. But if you're a wise bird, you will look for scarecrows because you know wherever there's a scarecrow, there's a, there's a beautiful garden. The scarecrow... I mean, sometimes scarecrows will literally stare you down, but the power of it is, you know, Jesus is he's, he shows us they're just decoys. They're not real. They have eyes that look, but they can't see. Have you ever met somebody that has eyes that look, but they can't really see? They look, but they can't see. They just look. That's, that's the way Jesus says judges are. That's why he says, don't judge, but ask. Right? Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. For whoever asks, receives. And those who seek, find. And those who knock, the door is open. But he just says right before there, don't judge. Because it's a cycle. And when you are judged, stop the cycle. And begin to ask and seek. Right? And you're going to find. Because wherever there's a scarecrow... There's always a garden. Amen? Sometimes we, we fly away and we are afraid. And Jesus just says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Look beyond that scarecrow and find the treasure that's waiting in the field. Right? Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Listen to your heart. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Listen to your heart. You're a child of God. 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 Say that. I'm a child of God. 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 There's a scarecrow. There's a scarecrow standing in a farmer's field. What it's guarding has not been revealed Cause I can't find something that's been found before And I won't find nothing if I close that door If I were, 
If I were a bird, if I were a foolish bird, I'd listen to my fear and fly away from here. But if I were a bird, if I were a wise bird, I'd listen to my heart and find a treasure waiting in the field. waiting in the field there's a scarecrow there's a scarecrow living in my memory sometimes they even come in your dreams it just hangs around and stares at me with eyes that look with eyes that look but can I see there's a scarecrow, there's a scarecrow living in my memory. Sing it this. If I were a bird, if I were, if I were a foolish bird, I'd listen to my fear and fly away from here. But if I were a bird, if I were a I'd listen to my heart and find a treasure waiting in the field. It's waiting in the field. Mm -hmm. It's waiting in the field. It's waiting in the field. Cause everybody leaves the garden And everybody needs a home And everybody's scared of dying But no one But no one wants to roll away stone like everybody's scared to death but no one wants to teach us how to live because the only people that can really teach us how to live are people that have learned how to die and that there's life after death so go on and roll away the stone because there's a scarecrow Cause there's a scarecrow wherever the church bell rings It's terrified by the gift she brings We can't change nothing without suffering And even scarecrows need to hear the songs we If I Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. You're a child of God. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. You're a child of God. Say that. I'm a child of God. Say that. 
I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Say, I'm a child of God. 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 Sing that. I'm a child of God. 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 Yeah. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Yeah. Let the fear be gone. Go on, let it go. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. I'm gonna listen to my heart. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to my heart. Go on. Let the fear be gone. Yeah. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Yeah. I'm gonna listen to my heart. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Yeah, I'm going to listen to my heart. 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 I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm going to listen to my heart. Sing one one last song over you. Let us sing a song of Jesus. Let us sing the song of him. What was sung in the beginning, we'll be singing in the let us sing the song of Jesus. There is hope in the refrain. Oh, yeah. Let's just stop there. Because we can sing lines all day long and not really believe them. I mean, to think, you're so awesome. I love the hair. <laughs> yeah, see, for we all have left the garden and we'll all return again. Like, to really believe. Uh, how about this? There was a man named Richard Rohr and he was brought up an amazing Catholic. And as a Catholic kid, his parents were really Catholic. And, and Catholics are awesome. I love Catholics. Half of what I read is Catholic. I love Catholics. There's some of the best theology in the world. It's written by Catholics and Orthodox guys. But they were really conservative. And Richard Roy is a Franciscan. And he was reading, I don't know if you've ever heard of Dostoevsky, but reading it in Russian when you're 13 is pretty amazing. And he was reading and interpreting Dostoevsky. Obviously, he was called to be a priest or something, something like that, because you don't do that when you're 13, usually. I mean, except my son, of course, he reads Dostoevsky. <laughs> no, just kidding, Sam. So, but listen, 
And when, and when, he's, and when he's 18, and we're just going to, even in a place like this, it's so absent of religion, you're going to feel it when I just say these words. Except now you won't feel it as much because I just said that, and you're going to try to resist feeling that because you're Minnesotan. But, uh, so, but, and I'm Minnesotan too, so I can say that, right? It's like, you know. So, but listen, and he goes and he tells his mom and dad, I don't believe in Adam and Eve anymore. I just don't believe in it. I don't believe in Adam and Eve anymore. I'm just letting that sit. Just let it sit. Cause, and now, now this is when I would tell you that the story ends good so I can keep telling the story. You know what I mean? <laughs> and not feel the tension. But see, we, I love tension. Don't you like tension? Jesus loved tension. That's, that's why he said to carry a cross. Because it's this. It's tension. It's not parallels. It's tension. He allowed things to hold in coincidence, coincidence of opposite things in our lives. Let them sit there in the tension. The church is the only place in the world that there's a hope for that happening. You know what we want? We want easy answers, and then we wonder why our young people don't follow Jesus anymore. Even with all the charismatic things that we've done, and all the expression, and all the relevancy, we've had all the movements, and people are still running away. Why? Because easy answers are easily replaced. And fundamentalism on all sides, to me, there's no difference between a Muslim, a Christian fundamentalist, a Muslim fundamentalist, and an atheist. An atheist just believes everybody that doesn't think the way they think is, is stupid, and a Christian that says everybody that doesn't think the way I think is going to hell. It's just the same thing. Jesus doesn't call us to be the answer. Your mind is too simple to be the answer. Jesus calls us to lead people to the living, resurrected hand of Jesus. You do not hold the truth. And your image of Jesus is not Jesus. That's tough, isn't it? It's tough for me too. I know, it's tough, isn't it? It's just tough that my image of Jesus isn't Jesus. It isn't. Because Jesus is resurrected. That's what makes following Jesus different than all other religions of the world. We do not believe in an ideology. We believe in a living, resurrected Jesus. And easy answers are easily replaced. It's just the way it is. And that's why what you would have died for 12 years ago, most of those things you wouldn't die for now. Just don't, don't live your life climbing up a ladder only to get to the top of it and find out it's facing the wrong wall. Grab hold of the living hand of Jesus. Because Jesus doesn't give us an easy answer. Jesus gives us incarnation. Do you know what that means? He says, I'm here with you. In the midst of your pain, I'm here with you. And when you don't have an answer, I'm here with you. When you're angry, I'm sitting with you, right next to you. And I'm not afraid of you being angry. And I'm not going to try to do the cheap thing and say, well, you really shouldn't be angry. you got to let that go and just be good. No, he'll just sit there with you in the midst of that anger. And he'll say, hey, I'm here with you. I mean, think about the difference between Jesus and, I mean, even me, but most of us, it's like, do, Jesus would just sit with you. And we'd give you the quick answer to fix your problems. This is, have you ever wondered why? When, and then we're going to sing the song, but yeah, I just have to say this stuff, it just creates, but I'll get back to the guy, but I'm just letting that tension. Have you ever wondered why Jesus asks the blind man Barnabas, who'd been blind his whole life, what he can do for him? Hey, blind man Barnabas, come, what can I do for you? I asked Jesus, I, want, I don't want an easy answer. Jesus, you're living, you're alive, you're resurrected. Why did you ask him that question? Why did you ask him what you could do for him? Isn't it obvious? He's been blind his whole life. 
Now, I wish Jesus would have just answered me, but Jesus, this is another thing about Jesus. Jesus, when you ask him a question, he's here with you, but he doesn't necessarily feel the need to answer me right away. So he'll just let me sit. And this is also like Jesus. I remember when Jesus answered me that question, it was at 3.30 in the morning. And it came like a whisper and woke me enough that I knew it was there and it spoke to me. But I, I, had, I had permission from the Spirit. It was like I felt this permission that I could either get up and write it down or I could go back to sleep and forget it. Like, that's the way Jesus answers often. So he doesn't like say, get up, here's the answer. No, he'll give you a choice. And in the middle of the night, all of a sudden, he'll come with the answer when you least expect it. Mercy's always unpredictable. The gifts of God are always unpredictable. It's not predictable. We don't control God. We don't, we don't control Jesus. It's, it's more intimate than that. It's way more intimate than that. Jesus is way more alive than that. And, and he's also, he's, he's quite practiced at relationship. And so he'll just leave you hanging, and then he'll come to you at 3.30 in the morning and say, how much do you really want to know the answer? <laughs> and I remember the whisper, because I wanted to know him. I didn't just want to fix him. You understand? Jesus, Jesus asks him, and I, because he doesn't want to just fix you. He, didn't just want, he could just fix him, but that's not what he chose to do. He wants to know him. And you know what else he wants to know? He wants to know if you know what you need. Right? So Jesus is no easy answer. Jesus sits with us. Jesus walks with us. And this is, um, this is what happened to my, this Richard Rohr. He, he says, I don't believe in Adam and Eve anymore. His mom flipped out. Parents flipped out. You don't believe in Adam and Eve anymore. What have we done? We failed. And then 25 years later, He says, I believe in Adam and Eve again. Isn't that unbelievable? He says, but now I didn't believe in them in just one little dimension. I believed in them in like 10 different dimensions. Why? Because Jesus is on a journey with you and he's not afraid when you leave the garden. In fact, sometimes he'll push you out of the garden of what you think you know. What you think you comprehend and all you think you know. So that you can gain more dimension to what you really believe. Right? We all left the garden. We all returned again. Let me ask you this. I mean, do you think that the life of Jonah is a life of faith when he was running? I just even want to say over many of you, let the fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. See, we can sing it, but like, let that fear be gone. Let the fear be gone. Let the control be gone. Let the control be gone. Let your control freakishness be gone. Let the control be gone. Let the control be gone. Let the control be gone. Let the fear be gone. Right? And let the trust begin. Let the trust begin. Let the trust begin. Let the love begin. Let the seeing begin. Let the faith begin. Let the hope begin. Let it all begin. Because Jesus, he never lets you go. He never lets you go. He never lets you go. He never lets you go.
And right now, I just even break off the spirit of condemnation and judgment. The spirit of fear. It says if you, if you don't think the way that I think, you don't think the way somebody else thinks, or you do it just a little different, then you're wrong. We just declare over you the very freedom of Jesus. Not anarchy, but trust. That's the freedom of Jesus. Trust in your Father and everything, taking His hand and letting Him lead. I'm a child of God. Say that. I'm a child of God. Yeah. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Yes. I'm a child of God. Yeah. I'm a child of God. A child of God. All right, so that's enough. I'll let you guys go. I'm gonna sing this over you, okay? Let us sing the song of Jesus. Let us sing the song of Him. What was sung in the beginning, we'll be singing in the let us sing the song of Jesus. There is hope in the refrain. For we all have left the garden and we'll all return again. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Let us sing the song of you. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Let us sing the song. the song of the reaper and the mercy that is saved is the mercy that we need let us sing the song of Jesus let it burn just like a flame let it light a fire in every heart that hears our Savior's name right You know, I think even here in Otter Tail, and I don't know anything, I'm glad I don't know anything about any of the history here. 
I just got here for the first time. I don't know any history. And I'm glad I don't. Because now I can say what I have to say. Love does not trap us. Love can hold us close and it can let us go and it can hold us close again. It can let us go and run and leave the garden and it can let us come home again. That's the way real love is. I know because I was raised by somebody that really loved me. And my parents will let me go and I come home and I think outside the box. and I'm, I mean, I was adopted by parents that are pretty A to B. And I'm like, woohoo, way out of the box. And my parents just... This is, it's always open. What I said earlier, it's really true. It's like all, all the condemnation that if you don't see things the way that I see them. See, that's the opposite way that Jesus taught. Jesus didn't say, we have relationship because you agree with my absolutes. That's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, we have relationship. Because you hang with me. Because you're willing to walk with me. That's why we have relationship. And and, and I I just feel like I just want to break off judgments of people who think they know. Like even in auditory, I mean it's a small place so I don't even know if it really exists here. You know and the leadership here is so free. But even, maybe it's towards the leadership. Maybe it's even towards people in this room. Maybe it's towards worshipers in this room. But I, right now, just raise your hands, and I just want to break off of you. Jesus doesn't cut you off. That's not the way the prophetic works. The prophet doesn't cut you off if you don't see it his way. Jesus doesn't cut you off. Jesus lets you go and keeps the door open. You understand the difference? He lets you go. Love lets you go. Love lets you go. Love lets you go and keeps the door open. We break off condemnation and judgment and division. Actually, I want to declare this. Division is a scarecrow. It's not even real. There is no division in the body of Jesus. I just speak that right now. There's no division in the body of Christ. There's no division. He's not divided. Jesus is whole. The only division that happens is when people won't let their ideas go for the sake of relationship. So right now, we just declare over Otter Tail, and we declare over this place, and we declare over the leadership, and we declare over all the intercessors and the worshipers. May we know May we experience the living Jesus that can speak to us in a voice that's radically opposed to our own and keep us at the table with people that don't see it the way we see it. Jesus, thank you for the table that's been built here. Thank you, Lord, for the table that's been built here. And we break off condemnation. We break off judgment. We break off the spirit of division. Break off the spirit of control. And we cloak, even the leaders, come on up, Pete, come on, and and Pam. I just, I think, like I said last night about watering the trees, you know? Like, I think, I think just people that love Pete and Pam, I just want you to come up right now and just start clothing them, just loving on them. Come on up, just start loving on them. And we're all going to sing this last song verse together. I'm going to teach you it. Mm-hmm.
Sing that with me. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Let us sing the song of Jesus. The song of Jesus. Let us sing. Let us sing the song of Him. The song of Him. And let us sing the song of Jesus. The song of Jesus. Let us sing the song. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Let us sing the song of Jesus. So we say this. Let us sing the song. Let us sing the song of Jesus. It's a song that will remain. It's a song that will remain. It'll be there in the struggle. It'll push right through the pain. Let us sing the song of Jesus. For eternity lives on. Through the power. Through the power of resurrection. And the living Son of God. Let us sing. Yeah. And let us sing the song. The song of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And let us sing yeah, yeah. the song of Him. Let us sing, let us sing the song, the song of Jesus. Let us sing, mm. let us sing the song of Jesus. Mm -mm. Let us sing the song of Jesus. Jesus is the one that will remain. So we say that. Let us sing the song of Jesus, because it's the song that will remain. It'll be there in 
the struggle It'll push right through the pain Let us sing the song of Jesus And for eternity lives on streets where you live, in the home where you live, this living, resurrected Jesus who knows us by our name. My friend James Duke says, if you can't see him with your eyes, stop looking with your eyes and start looking with your heart. So Jesus, open the eyes of our heart. Open our ears. Awaken our senses. Make us worshipers in spirit and truth. Right on the streets where we live, Lord, and homes where we live. Lord, let us use our faith to hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you're here with us. Thank you that you never leave. Thank you that we can take your hand. Amen. God bless everyone. 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Be here for round three of Jason Upton. Amen. I love this pack, but the 900, not to change subjects, uh-huh. is such a carnal, crazy thing that you just took us. What do you but, like about it? Well, I love this unit with that, but those ears weren't staying in my ears. So then I have those six drivers that stay in my ears.